Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program, Christ has conquered all our enemies, sin, death, and the devil. In this life, we will face hardships and struggles, and at times it may seem like God is not in control, but He is. Through His blood, Christ has claimed you and given you life never ending. By Christ's authority, you have been saved. All other authorities and ailments will come to an end, but God and His word will never end. And we have been claimed by Him for life without end. The service will begin with this opening hymn. Good morning, I'm Pastor Paul Hammes from Grace Lutheran Church in Wayne, Nebraska. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught, the Lord God has opened my ear. And I was not rebellious. I turned not backwards, I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle lesson is from James, beginning at chapter 3. Now many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that who he, we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits in the mouth of the horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a force is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptiles and sea creatures can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is restless, evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. For the same mouth come blessings and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and scribes arguing with them. And immediately at the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed, and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked her disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it was often ca cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if, if you can, all things are possible for you who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him, and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the re resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. Seven years ago, I was a groomsman for the first time. It was my childhood friend's wedding, and as a groomsman, I was designated to run some errands for the bride and for the groom to help out on the day of the wedding. In this role, I quickly learned an unwritten rule and cultural phenomenon that on the day of the wedding, there is something called the bride card. If the bride needs or wants something, anyone near or far will do whatever it takes to fulfill that need. It becomes an utmost priority. And that is where my role came into play. As I was sent on the errands, I very quickly learned that if you say the bride needs or wants something, people listen. The bride spent months or even years planning and preparing for this big day and she has all the authority. Everyone answers to her and for that one day, she is queen. So at my friend's wedding, as I took drink and food orders, looked for cell phone chargers and so on, I was doing so under the bride's authority. All I would have to do is drop the bride's name and now I was given some of the authority and respect that she had at her wedding. In Mark chapter six, we see an instance of Jesus showing his authority over creation while his disciples are left wondering why they could not perform their tasks. In many ways, this encounter Jesus has is a familiar sight. Jesus comes to a new town and people start to bring their sick and hurting to him. Throughout the Gospel of Mark, we see Jesus healing those that are brought to him. And this instance in Mark chapter 9 is no different. As soon as Jesus approaches the crowd, we are told people ran to him and greeted him. They saw that the healing man was there. The guy that can cast out demons and raise the dead to life was in town. Everyone got excited and continued the pattern of bringing him the sick. However, in this encounter, we, get, we are introduced to a little twist. This encounter focuses on a young man and his father. This boy that is brought to Jesus has already been seen by Christ's disciples, but they could not heal him. As the boy's father explains, his son has been tormented by a demon since childhood. This spirit mutes the boy and causes him to freeze and fall down foaming at the mouth. Today, we might read the symptoms and think of a seizure, or maybe the young man shows signs of epilepsy, but the demon does not stop there. It tries to take the boy's life by drowning or even burning him. So this boy's father first brings him to Christ's disciples. Already in the, the Gospel of Mark, the disciples have been going throughout running errands for Christ. Like a groomsman dropping the bride's name, the disciples have been operating under the authority of Christ. And up until this point, we are told about, about any issues with this authority. In Mark 6, we are told of when Jesus sends his disciples out where they healed the sick and cast out demons. They had gotten used to being able to operate under Christ's authority and perform miraculous signs. So when they run into this spirit in chapter 9, they are taken aback when they can't cast it out. They are still operating under Christ's authority. We know they will go on and do more miraculous things under Christ, but this encounter leaves them wondering why they could not. This failure also affects the crowd. Now they see Christ's disciples are not in control. Rather, the evil spirit is, and everyone watching knows it. Now Christ's authority is drawn into question. After Jesus saw all this, he steps in and showed his authority. Christ's response is one of brutal honesty. In verse 19, he says, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. You can almost hear the disappointment in Christ's response and a genuine sorrow. This encounter happened right after Christ's transfiguration. He just showed his divinity and is now headed to Jerusalem, where he will soon be arrested and crucified. Jesus knows the time is running short for his earthly ministry. Soon his disciples will have to learn to operate without him being physically there. But Jesus' disappointment with his disciples does not keep him from attending to the young man in front of him. Jesus shows his great mercy and expels this evil spirit and saves the young man. Jesus does what his disciples could not. At the very end of the passage in verse 29, the disciples and Jesus have a private conversation following 
the interaction with the young boy and his father. The disciples were still perplexed as to why they themselves could not drive out the demon. So Jesus explains that the reason the disciples could not cast out the spirit is because this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This was all new and unexpected for the disciples. All throughout the, this encounter, Jesus is having to bear with his disciples, not knowing how to properly use the authority they have been given. This is clear when Jesus says, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to bear with you? How long am I to be with you? Bring him to me. So how long is Christ to bear with them? How long has Christ already borne the incompetence of his followers to this point? Ever since God created the universe, humans have been living under God's authority. Adam and Eve rebelled against this authority, bringing sin into the world. And ever since, humans have struggled with sin and our relationship with God. One of the countless examples is when, by God's authority, Moses split the Red Sea and led the Israelites to freedom from Egypt. And then Moses sinned against God by striking a rock to bring water, which was not following God's instructions. This was an act of rebellion against God's authority. All throughout the Old Testament, we see prophets, kings, and judges being raised up and wielding God's authority time and time again to help bring the Israelites back to the one true God. And now after thousands of years of tiresome rebellion and sin, Jesus is having his authority, God's authority, question once again. The disciples could not cast out the evil spirit, and now the possessed boy's father is questioning Christ's authority. In verse 22, the man says, if you can do anything, help us. To which Christ replies, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. If Jesus can, I'm almost offended for Christ's sake. Does this mean, does this man know who he is talking to? If anyone can, it is Jesus. If Christ, the creator of the universe, can breathe life into dust, if he can put galaxies into motion and raise the dead back to life, I'm sure he has the authority to cast out one little spirit, and he does. Jesus casts out the spirit and saves the boy from further torment because Jesus is merciful and loving and has the authority. Despite any questions of his authority or disbelief of the disciples or crowd, Jesus steps in and heals the boy. So often we can forget who truly has authority and is in charge of this world. When we see a horrible accident happen, it may seem like death has authority in this world. We may shrug off occurrences by chalking it up to just pure randomness or luck and thinking these are some sort of authority in the universe. We may think of you, are, if you are lucky, you will be successful and healthy, but the unlucky will have sickness and hardships. In the middle of a heated political cycle, it may seem like we have the authority. We get to vote on who will run our country. Or maybe you think the news or big corporations have power and authority to make decisions. All of this just to elect someone who is then seen as having ultimate authority in this country. Or maybe you are battling a sickness and need medical help. Now the doctor has authority over your treatment. And it may even seem like they have the authority over whether you live or die. We can start looking at these different authorities and influences in our lives and start following them and using their authority like a groomsman dropping the bride's name at her wedding. We start to trust in these worldly authorities and question gods. We think, if only I had more money or power, I would be happy and at peace, rather than turning to our Lord and Creator for peace and comfort. We rely on our earthly leaders thinking, if only this person or that person would be elected, then I could finally rest and things would be better. We make these idols instead of turning to God and trusting that he is the, in control. Regardless of who is in power, regardless of what is affecting you, regardless of your situation in life, God is in control. The ultimate authority is God. All other authorities come from him and him alone. When we lose sight of God and start thinking our hope or comfort or salvation comes from something else, we are falling into the age-old cycle of sin and are rebelling against God. Because God is the ultimate authority, God gives power to our leaders and takes it away. 
God heals the sick and makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. We rejoice every day because it's a day that the Lord has made. God is the utmost authority by whom all things operate. That means that God has authority over all his creation and he uses his authority to save you and me. Christ heals a young man from the evil spirit, showing his authority over the devil. Christ then continues on to Jerusalem where he is crucified and died for the sake of humanity. Three days later, Jesus rises from the dead, showing his authority over death itself. And Christ will return on the last day, bringing a new sinless creation, reminding us of his authority over sin. Christ has conquered all our enemies, sin, death, and the devil. In this life, we will face hardships and struggles, and at times it may seem like God is not in control, but he is. Through his blood, Christ has claimed you and given you life never ending. By Christ's authority, you have been saved. All other authorities and ailments will come to an end, but God and his word will never end. And we have been claimed by him for life without end. So that is the authority that, like the disciples, we operate under. We still need to respect the worldly authorities that God has placed in our lives, like civil servants, parents, and employers. God has given them certain authorities, but we live and operate under God and his authority. We see this when we hear our pastor speak words of forgiveness. He is speaking this under Christ's authority. When you forgive others in your life, you are doing so by Christ's authority as well. And just as Christ mentions at the end of the passage, we have prayer. You may never be used to cast out demons or heal the sick, but we have the gift of prayer. Do not ever doubt the power of prayer and speaking with God. He hears you and listens to you. So we should pray for our leaders and the sick and hurting as we look forward to Christ's return when we'll see him face to face. Amen. Now may the peace that of God that surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by hearing God's word. If you are able to attend local services, I invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in Wayne area, please join us at Grace Sunday mornings at 8 or 10.30 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on the station.